Walking through a graveyard yesterday, I stepped on a broken piece of a headstone with just my birthday inscribed on it. Reddit, what's your creepiest slash weirdest coincidental experience? My friend and I were in the car one night driving to see a movie. I had the most eerie feeling for no reason and it wouldn't go away so I vocalized it to her. I have the creepiest feeling right now, no idea why. She says me too, what the hell, I've been feeling creeped out for the last 10 minutes. A couple minutes later her phone rings, unknown number, she answers and no one's there so she hangs up. Rings again, same number, picks up. Then my phone rings, different unknown number. I get on the phone, hello? Hello? I hear my own voice saying hello on her cell phone. We realize we're talking to each other and get really freaked out and throw our phones in the back seat. Couple seconds later there's a loud bang on the side of her car door, like someone threw something at the car, but there were no cars or people around. Pull over, get out. There's a huge dent in the side of her car. Thoroughly creeped out for the rest of the night. When I was a kid, maybe around 9 or 10, my friends and I would always hang out in the woods behind our bus stop. There were four of us that would always go back there, but my friend Alex and I would go back there most often. There wasn't really anything inherently weird or creepy about the woods, but I remember feeling very calm back there, despite generally having attention and anxiety problems. I had a dream one night that me and Alex, but neither of the other two, were hanging out in the woods and an old woman came up to us to tell us that we shouldn't go back there anymore and that the woods were private property, and then she turns around and walks up into the sky. The next morning I was telling Alex about the dream and I get to the part with the old lady. I say and she told us not to go back into the woods behind the bus stop anymore and Alex finishes the sentence because it's private property. And then she floated away. Turns out Alex had been having the same dream every now and then for a few months at that point. He'd never told me about it. We compared a few other details about the dream and what Alex said sounded familiar, i.e., it was foggy, there was a green paned iron gate that didn't really exist, but these parts I'm willing to chalk up to power of suggestion. Went to a job interview that required a one-day plane trip to and from the company's headquarters in Midland, Texas. I had been struggling on the decision to take the position if offered because at the time I had a cush position with another company. Almost empty flight and I had what I thought would be a whole row to myself. The last person to get on the plane was a woman who looked to be about 60 and lived a rough life. She decides to sit right next to me even though she could have chose to have a row to herself. I did not really mind since she seemed friendly and it was relatively short flight, about 45 minutes. Once we get to the part in the flight where we can turn on electronic devices, the lady asks if she can see my copy of SkyMall since hers was missing. We start to talk a bit and then she finally asks, I bet you are wondering why I decided to sit next to you on the flight huh? It does spark my interest but I was expecting something along the lines of I remind her of her grandson. I can tell you're a good person and I wanted to tell you about the great life you have. You see I can read people. I chuckle a little bit and ask what she means by read. You don't believe me do you? You probably think I am some cookie delusional woman who goes around reading people's hands. I laugh and say that I rather enjoy this conversation because most flights I have are boring and non-eventful. You were late for your Orignal flight and that is why you are on this one. Correct but I figured she saw me at the gate way before anyone else or saw me at the ticket counter at the gate. Plus my ticket still had the previous flight info on it, maybe she caught a look. I also know you're married, correct, I was wearing my ring easy one. You're struggling with a decision, which by the way is why you're flying today. Another easy deduction since I carried no luggage whatsoever. Not even a laptop. Well you may not believe me but I sat next to you to tell you that no matter what path you take you will not ever doubt if it was the right decision. Pick the option you thought you would take when you were flying to Midland, where I was visiting. That is the best one for you. Me, thanks, I appreciate your input. I pretty much already made up my mind and that bit of info might just give me the confidence to act. You still don't believe what I have told you do you? At this point she starts what I like to think is a lightning round of facts no stranger should be able to guess. She got my birth date within two days. And she told me should be at most two days off. The fact I am married my high school sweetheart. The fact we met in eighth grade. The fact she is of Mediterranean descent. At this point in time I am gasped. I tell her she is correct and start to ask how she knew those things, thinking it is a gag of some sort. Right then a college girl turns around from her row in front of us and asks this lady for her help on the decision she should make. The lady tells the girl that she will not help choose which of the three options she, the college student, should take. She further tells her that she won't help her because she is a bad person and she is only thinking of how to make the choice that best benefits her in the situation. 
the girl turns white, I can only assume she hit the nail on the head, and turns to me and says there is not much time before we land and she has one more thing to tell me. The girl in front of us interrupts and asks which the decision she should make and is willing to accept it even if it is not the best one for her. The old lady turns back to the college girl and says something along the lines of how she does not help those who have a bad heart because it drains her of her energy. She states that she is 40 years old, again she looked at least 60, and has learned that if she helps those who are not pure in any way she herself pays the price. She quickly turns to me and says, listen I wish we started talking earlier I much more to share. We will land soon but I want you to know that this will not be the last time you see me. And next time you see me I will have to give you some really bad news. But you should not worry about the encounter because by the time I approach you and you recognize me, you will have figured out what I'm going to tell you. By then you will get closure on issue and you can be at ease with it. You will not think of it as bad news when I tell you, but it will be. Right after she says the last word the captain comes on and says we are on final approach. Trey tables up all that jazz. This lady all of a sudden goes into what looks like pain. She asks the stewardess for two plastic cups and a stick of gum. She chews the gum, places a plastic cup over each ear, and starts rocking back and forth in her seat. I am told later this is common thing to do on an airplane if you have your problems. When we finally land and she calms down I ask if she is okay. She says everything is fine and that she is running terribly late for another event. She used the word event. She tells me not to lose any sleep about our talk and to feel good about my life since I met her. She tells me to stay straight and wishes me and my wife good luck with our future together, we got married earlier that year. Before I knew it she was running off of the plane, pushing people out of her way, and I never saw her again, yet. I was off-roading in a pretty remote area and my Cherokee died. I mean just cut off, I'm dead, sorry Charlie dead. Being a Jeep guy I knew how it acted right before it was the CPS, crankcase positioning sensor, which is fairly common on 4.0 Jeeps. I was stupid, wheeling alone, and about 4 miles plus from pavement and another 15 miles from town. To make it even better I had little cell reception, this was a while ago, back when we had analog phones, and it was almost 8 pm. It would be dark soon. I knew if I got back to the paved road I could get reception and call so I committed myself to the walkout and shut the door, took a step and tripped over my own foot. I fell flat on my stomach and right there, right in front of me, was a CPS. It was for a Jeep. Now a normal person would think that someone was out wheeling, had the same issue, and this was a dead one as well but I thought duck it, I carry plenty of spare tools, and usually parts but not a CPS, because I'm dumb, so I decided to use what little daylight was left to try and swap it in. I had a mag light as well so worst case I would just be walking out dark. Put it on, which is a huge pain in the ass due to location on the back of the engine at the bell housing, and turn the key, started right the hell up. No issue at all. In fact it has been 7 years since this incident and I'm still running the same CPS. I know this may not sound creepy but I thought it was one hell of a weird coincident. I was taking some picture at the graveyard, it was for a class so my friends were there modeling for me, anyways, I ask one of my friends to try to look like she is crying, while I adjust my camera, when I go to take her her picture, I see she is doing a great job, she is sobbing up and crying, I take a couple of pictures before realizing that she is looking at this big family grave. With the exact names and last names as her real lives, there was her dad's name, mom, sister and brother, exact name with exact last name. Her family lives on another state and they are alive. So that was spooky, but later on we are all in my car, and we are listening to some music one of us had on a USB, we were listening to a son for like the third time, when the sound goes off and a horrible voice says get back from where you came from, and the song continues where it left off. We were so creeped out we had to stop and catch our breath. To this day I still don't know what it was, maybe interference from another radio? No idea, but it was creepy. This is a religious slash weird one and it's long but TLDR, guardian angel or imaginary friend saved my life. Back in college I was poor as hell so I often drove people to the airport during school breaks at $20 per way. Most of this journey is via highway in MA slash CT, Bradley Airport, and is fairly well lit. Anyway, one day as I'm driving when I glance in my rearview mirror I see a man standing in the middle of the road. I glance back to the front of the car, to make sure I'm not about to rear-end anyone, and mumbling to myself, what an idiot. Since I'm thinking whoever is fool enough to stand in the middle of the road will likely get run over. When I glance back again, no one is there. But I'm traveling semi-fast, and who knows, maybe he was running across the road, etc. Two weeks later, 
I'm driving to the grocery store and I glance in the rearview mirror and see this same man standing in the road again. It's broad daylight, and though it's just a glance I gather he's tall and wearing white, or at least I get that impression. I see him again a few days later, this time at night. At this point the movie from Tales of the Crypt with the weird road worker thanks for the ride lady fills my brain and I start freaking out that a zombie dead man is following me around town, and one day I may look in the mirror and he'll be in the back seat with his face rotting off, etc. So I start checking my rearview mirror, often, all the time, psychotically, because I develop a fear of the man following me around. Now, I'm a pretty safe driver so whenever I check to see if he's there, I'm sure to look ahead for traffic, brake, then look in the mirror. I am sufficiently scared about it to mention it to my mother, who points out that it might be a homeless man, or something. Anyway, a few weeks later is end of Christmas break and so I'm driving tons of folks to the airport again. One of them is a late flight so it's nearly midnight when I pick up the girl. As we are driving back to school, I get this irrational, overwhelming fear of seeing the man in the rearview mirror again. We're on the highway and I'm going at a pretty fast pace, so I look ahead, I tap the brakes, and then look in the rearview mirror. At this exact moment, a car slingshots past me on the right, swerves across my lane, hits the median, and then rolls several times at 80 miles per hour. I slam on my brakes and pull over, and the girl calls the police. The driver, really intoxicated, would have struck my car and hit us into the median if I hadn't hit my brakes at that exact moment, checking for the weird man who stood in the road. Never saw my guardian angel again, still unsure if I imagined it all or what. Had a nightmare a few years back that went like this. I was driving down a long stretch of empty highway and felt very unnerved. It was raining, and a man came walking into the middle of the road from the line of trees by the highway. I slowed the car, though I felt frightened to do so, and when I came close, I saw that it was a friend of mine from college. He looked devastated, and his skin was very pale. I rolled down my window to ask what had happened and when I did he reached out suddenly and grabbed me, at which point I woke up. Found out the very next day that he had died in the night after driving drunk and crashing his car into the trees by a highway. Never spoke a word about it to anyone, feeling that people would take too much from it, or think I was trying to gain some attention from his death. I think that I had the dream because I've always known him to be reckless, and that the timing of the dream was simply coincidence. It weirds me out nonetheless. My grandmother had schizophrenia and severe paranoia. One of her major fears was that she was being watched, specifically people filming her. This is a common symptom, so we didn't think it was that strange. One day, we were visiting a large city, far from our home, and there was a man with one of those old hand-held camera thingy-mashidgers pointed at us. This was making my grandmother quite upset, so my dad went up to ask the guy if he could put the camera away, but the guy took off running. About 10 or so feet into his run, he smashed into another guy and dropped his camera. He kept on running and after a bit, I think he realized he didn't have the camera, cause he looked back, had this big face of fear and anger, shook his head, and kept on running. Dad picked up the camera and on it was about 3 to 4 hours of us walking around the city. Only us walking around the city. We never saw the guy again. A few years later my grandmother died. This isn't the first strange thing that's happened to my family though. Obvious throwaway account. I used to work evenings, from 8pm to 4am at a hotel, when I was in my early 20s. I was still living out at my folks farm, a 20 minutes drive from town. I worked the shift for a couple years. One night driving home after a particularly hard shift I drove into a white blob of light. It was so bright it washed out all of the details. I couldn't see the ditch or the lines on the road two feet in front of me. I slowed down and pulled over the best I could. It was dead silent. Not a sound. Not a breeze. Nothing. It was disturbingly still. I got out of the car and walked around a bit but I was scared to loose the car. After just a couple of feet the car was being washed out by the light. I hollered but there wasn't an echo or anything. After a few moments of this nothingness the light was sucked into a single point. There was a large disc just floating there, surrounded by lights. It tilted up and then took off like a shot. No noise. No wind. Nothing. It moved faster than anything I have ever seen. And disappeared on the horizon. There was sound again, a breeze, the world was back to normal. I looked around and there was another car 100 feet farther up the road. A couple was standing outside the car looking out to the horizon where the disc disappeared, just like I was. We nodded at each other. Got into our cars and left. We didn't say a word to each other. I got home and looked at the clock, I never wear a watch and my old beater of a car didn't have a clock, 
and it was 6.30 a.m. I was usually home by 4.30 a.m. No clue where those two hours went. I would have sworn it was no more than a couple of minutes. I have never told anyone about it and I don't think I will ever tell anyone I know about it. I would think a person was crazy for such a story and so I will just keep living with it. Just dump it out from an anonymous account because it has been weighing on me for years. I've got one. There's a huge cemetery in a neighboring city that I love to go visit prior to having kids. The Black Dahlia, among many many others, is buried there. A few years ago, when my son was three and my daughter was one, out of randomness one morning I decided we would go to that cemetery to walk around for a bit and have a picnic lunch. I told my husband about my plan, packed up lunch, the mom bag, kids and headed out the door. On the way to the cemetery, my son asked me where we were going and I told him we were going to go on a walk through a park and have a picnic lunch. I did not tell him we were going to a cemetery or that people that have passed away are buried there. We get there and drive past all the administrative buildings and main gigantic water fountain. Then we head up towards the top, but before getting there I take a turn to head past some of the oldest graves and as we round a bend my son says to me, Mommy, do you see all the people? The hairs on my neck stand, as I ask my, three-year-old, son, what people? And mind you there isn't a single living person outside of my car in sight, and my son replies, all the people on the hill waving at me. I looked around, couldn't see a single person and hadn't seen one since we entered the grounds, I told my son, no buddy, I can't see the people, but just because mommy cannot see them doesn't mean they might not be there. Let's go have lunch somewhere else, so we don't bother them. And basically I nope the hell out of there. Now, I have no idea what my son may have been seeing but just like I said to him, just because I cannot see it, doesn't mean it isn't there. If he could actually see people waving at him, that I couldn't see, I haven't the faintest if they were beckoning slash waving at him with friendly or malicious intent, so yeah, duck that. And now I am thoroughly creeped out. As always, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, show your support. Leave your thoughts and opinions down below.